Okay, let's conclude by talking about several open issues and extensions of this work. The first question of interest is, can these materials be realized in nature? So can we actually realize a weak topological phase in a real material system? One might be skeptical because these systems are protected by translation symmetry, and any real material will not be pristine. It will have defects and things like that, which in principle break the translation symmetry. But it turns out that these weak topological considerations are at least slightly robust from these type of, uh, this type of disorder because they actually have been found in nature. So there have been several material proposals for systems with non-trivial weak indices. And actually, just a few months ago, there was a paper which did measurements on a proposed weak topological considerator in a bismuth compound. And they measured the properties of step edges on the surface of the material. Now, a step edge occurs when an edge dislocation floats to the surface of material and forms an extra bump or step on the surface. The boundary of this step, where the step goes from up to down, can now harbor these type of topological bound states. And there's at least initial evidence that these step edges actually do harbor these bound states, which is exciting for this field. Along with this, the weak topological considerations are only the first step in understanding so-called topological crystalline phases of matter, which are phases of matter which are topological and protected by spatial symmetries. So translation symmetry is one type of spatial symmetry. We can also have rotation symmetries or reflection and mirror symmetries, or other, any other type of point group or space group symmetries. So later in this course, we will discuss topological crystal insulators. So we will hold off much of the discussion till then, but let's briefly talk about the case of rotation symmetric systems. There are defects for rotation symmetries called disclinations. And what I'm showing here on this slide is a picture of a square lattice with a minus 90 degree disclination. Essentially, if I may take a loop around this disclination, instead of being translated, you can see I end up back where I started by taking the loop, I am instead rotated. It's a rotation defect. For the square lattice, since there are two different rotation centers, we can have different types of defects with the same angular deficit. So for example, the top two defects here have the same minus 90 degree rotation angle once I traverse the path around it, but they differ in the core. For the left disclination, I have a trivalent vertex in the core, and for the right disclination, I have a triangular plaquette. The same can be said for plus 90 degrees. In these cases, on the left side, I have a five-valent vertex at the core, and in this case, I have a pentagon at the core. So we have two different types of disclinations for each angular deficit, either plus 90 or minus 90 for this case. Now we might ask, can these disclinations harbor topological bound states? And the first indication this was true is from the following example. Basically, a dislocation itself is a disclination dipole. What I've drawn here is a slide showing an edge dislocation, and I'm highlighting through these green lines the disclination dipole. I have a trivalent vertex next to a pentagon, and this is a plus 90 and minus 90 degree disclination bound to each other. If this dislocation sits in a weak topological phase which harbors a bound state, and we split the disclination apart into its two constituent pieces, we might ask, how does the topological bound state decide where to go? Does it still exist? Does it split? Does it fractionalize? Does it follow one or the other? I'll leave this as a question for an excited listener. But the idea is that the actual bound state will follow one of the two different disclinations in this case. So far, we've only been considering non-interacting or maybe weakly interacting weak topological phases. There are some examples of weak topological phases that can only exist in the presence of strong interactions. Some topological variants that are only non-trivial when you have strong interactions. We won't consider these further here, but this possibility is an exciting new direction. Additionally, even for weakly interacting systems, there could be an interesting interplay between spontaneous spatial ordering and the spatial protection of the weak topological phase. Some systems which are weak topological phases may want to break the spatial symmetry, translation symmetry spontaneously. And due to that, there may be an interesting interplay between the dynamics of the order parameter and the former topology in the spatial protected phase. Overall, this field is at an exciting stage. There are some initial experiments which are optimistic, and there are many new theoretical and experimental developments to come.